That's good. All right. Um, let's start this off. So okay. first product. Updated product, but it's a really big update. So uh, this is the Blue Fruit Sniffer. Um, it's been out of stock for a bit because we wanted to do a revision on it where we've updated the firmware and instructions with the new Nordic V2 sniffer firmware. So the sniffer, we program in uh, Nordic's firmware onto it because um, they wrote the sniffer firmware and uh, they didn't release the code. We program it on for you. We've updated the instructions. It now works directly with Wirecast. So um, plug it in. You open up Wirecast on Linux, you, Mac. You mean Wireshark? It's Wireshark. Wireshark. Sorry. Wirecast no, is what we're using right now. I, I know. I know. I'm, and you know it's what? It's been a day. Okay? I'm looking out for everybody. You don't want to run Wirecast. No, don't run Wirecast you don't want on your sniffer. Don't run Wirecast Sorry. on a Bluetooth device. You just don't want to do it. Let me start again. Yeah. You plug in the Bluetooth sniffer and you can run Wireshark, which is with the best, most yeah. well-known open source protocol sniffing uh, software. Uh, I use it for USB and, and Ethernet sniffing all the time. Um, they wrote a plugin that works uh, pretty well with Wireshark. I uh, used it. Um, it's, it's great because it does all the decoding for you and it just grabs the packet. So if you want an easy, low-cost way to sniff Bluetooth low energy connections, um, especially if you are running Mac or Linux, which wasn't really well supported with V1, like we could get it to work, but it wasn't like great. You had to kind of run a couple times. Um, the V2 is much better, so check that out. And if you have a J-Link, you can, uh, we posted up the hex file in the guide if you can program um, a, a Nordic NRF51 chip, um, you can just burn it on yourself. Okay, next up. Eye stickers. Um, we had these really cool googly eyes in Ada Box 8, but um, we actually like these stickers as well um, for decorating your, your costume or cosplay robotics. And I have the stickers here. So you get like a thousand stickers, by the way. Like it's a mm. huge reel. And um, here's an example. Um, like we put these stickers on. Um, thank you. Uh, they're also good for security stickers if you want to hide your uh, your laptop. They're also good for like instant puppets, like hello. I'm gonna eat you. Yeah. That's how. Yeah. But so you, you get can a quickly, <laughs> quickly make a puppet. Um, this is from our like uh, we had um, what's it a uh, mini golf, and this was one of the um, things that would stop your your mini golf ball from going down the lane. Uh, it was a little hazard, so you can decorate it with these eyes. But you get a ton. I mean, like, yeah. I'll just show you. It's just like turn I, anything. I, you just do whatever. I, yeah, I see you are writing a letter. And you get like thousands of these stickers. So you know you can use them and use them and use them, and it's it's pretty cheap, and you get a ton on this. Um, I mean, you can reuse them if you want. You can stick them right back onto the wax paper. But I uh, really like these. They're cute. So great for um, decorating your electronics or kind of anything you want. And uh, you get lots, which I thought was uh, pretty sweet. I don't like it when you only get like ten stickers in a pack of eyes, and you're like, no, I need more eyes yeah we only do eyes here and we got plenty of them so that's the eye stickers okay this um this is a really long cable version of our um oh next picture of our one wire ds18 b20 sensor with the teflon jacket so this is a really high quality oh, these are two different products yeah, it's just, it's just mixed. That's the, it looks the same because it's a coil of white. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's, it's fine. This, just, just the, this. Like, sorry, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. It, I didn't even notice until like, I clicked on it. Because uh, then this is what it looks like when it's coiled up. Yeah. Um, it looks just like the sticker roll. Um, it's got a stainless steel head where the sensor is, and then I think it's three meters long of, of Teflon jacketed cable. So if you're using these one wire sensors, and we've got one wire code for Arduino, Circuit Python, or Raspberry Pi. What's great is you know you can have multiple sensors. You only use one wire, um, power, ground, and data, and it's a very standardized protocol. This is the DS18B20. So we've had these in a couple different uh, uh, lengths, but now we have one in three meters long. So it's great for long runs. Okay. Next up. We got this mini switch. I really like these switches. These are actually often referred to as flashlight switches because everyone who's had a flashlight, you know, there's like a button on the side and you click it once to turn on and click it again to turn off. Mm -hmm. This is basically the switch inside of there. And um, again, you click it once to turn on and then once to turn off. Looks like this. Another reason I really like these is first off, they got nice big flat pads, but look, there's holes in them. Do you see that, Phil? Holes? It means you can sew this onto yeah. something. So this is good for wearables where you want to have an on-off switch that's sewn and it's really low cost. You don't have to like, you know, get a uh, breakout board or whatever, you know, a, a, like a special switch on a breakout. This in and of itself, you just sew it right on 
and uh, you've got a really nice uh, strong on off switch it's not waterproof it's like weatherproof I think it you could probably have it outside for a bit but I wouldn't dunk this underwater or try to wash it but uh, it's a very effective low cost switch you can solder it onto something alligator clip onto it uh, I think it's a great switch we have that guide on make it switch so this is a um, single pole single throw switch I think yeah so connect disconnect each time you press it it connects and disconnects good for like 12 volts half an amp so switch away all right nice and small feels great clicking too very clicky okay next up it's this motor this is actually a motor that you wanted me to carry and you were right yep this is a great choice this is a motor. I was like, what is this? When you, when you got these, um, you picked some up. These are motors from DVD players. And they have a lot of really cool things going for them. One, the bottom is flat, as you can see here. So unlike DC hobby motors, you can put them flat on the ground, you can tape them, you can hot glue them, and they stay still. Another thing that's really nice about them is they have, see that black thing? Looks like a little record player. That's the DVD spindle holder. That's where you plug your DVD or CD onto. This is the motor inside that player that spins it around. What's nice about this is it, it's pre-attached. So you don't have to worry about like how you're gonna clamp or attach something to your DC motor axle. It's like, it's got a wheel already on it. And then what's best is you can get a, um, you can get these like mini, here's an old project we did. Yeah, this, You can get these mini CDs and now you have a wheel and it just like snaps right on. Yeah, this, this was a counterweight that I made or a spinning weight to do a propelled robot in a, yeah, and yeah. this and this works uh, fantastic, and it's like it's solid because it's got these little clips in it that hold things um, in place. Actually, this one doesn't have clips, but it will hold one in place. And you can also uh, glue and glue and tape things very easily um, to uh, this flat part. So it's it's a good. It's got holes you can attach to it. So I really like this as well. Um, and third, not last, but uh, third is it's really quiet. Um, these are very, because, uh, you know, they have to be in music players. So when they spin, they're, they're very silent. Yeah, you can hear And they're it. very well balanced. You can barely hear it. You can hear the air in the holes more than anything else. This is just it. And it's very balanced. You can see it's almost perfect. And this is just it uh, turning on and off with the cricket, which is a great way of using yeah. it. They're about 5 volts. They're like, it's just 5.9 volts, but 3 to 5 volts works great with them. It's... Um, not high torque because it's not geared, but if you want like a fan or just something to spin around, uh, these are really nice. I like especially this flat. The flat part and the fact that it's got something attached makes this a great uh, beginner motor. You can even use it for wheels for stuff too, like a paddle wheel or a fan, Yeah. but um, a nice low cost motor and uh, they're all the same size. So like once you've picked one DVD motor, um, you can be sure that you'll always be able to get this size motor because it's a completely standardized motor size. Okay. Yeah, so DC, DVD, CD motor. Next up. More long temperature sensors. This is a uh, thermocouple, K-type thermocouple. I think this is a five meters long. Um, it's incredibly long K-type thermocouple. Use it with our K-type thermocouple breakout boards. We have like I squared C, SPI, one wire ones. So if you're measuring very high temperatures, it's a fiberglass jacketed um, sensor with the uh, chromel and alumel, I think is welded together. Um, and then it's a long, nice long wire. So if you're measuring something in a kiln or uh, smoking something, like the people who do uh, barbecue smokers, they often use these sensors as well. Um, you have a lot more cable. Another thing you can do is, of course, you can cut this and um, just twist the wires yourself. You don't have to weld them. Um, so if you want to make a lot of smaller uh, thermocouple wires, is also a good pick. Okay, next up. Next up. Oh, this is cool. This is from Pi Supply. Um, we saw this on their site and we're like, how'd you do that? So they have this special two by 20 header. You know, this is the kind of header um, that you put on a Raspberry Pi Zero because the Raspberry Pi Zero, um, as shown here, does not come with uh, headers by default. Got it. And look, it's not just like this black plastic, it's, it's colored. So all those colored dots actually tell you what the pin does. It's a little code that if you know how to decode it, um, you can like, really easily plug things in. So the, the red, uh, pins. This is just showing how you would um, connect it. Uh, so pin one is over here. So you actually put this wire over here like this. And I'll zoom in. 
So these red uh, plugs over here, those are five volts. The black plugs are ground. Um, yellow is, uh, the orange is yellow, is three volt. Blue is don't connect. Those are the special um, hat detecting pins. And then green are the GPIO pins, G, GPIO, green. So yeah, you solder this on. Um, and then you've got like a really nice, uh, like self-documenting header for your Raspberry Pi Zero. Now remember, if you have a Raspberry Pi B, uh, sorry, 3B or 2B, your B plus, those already have the header installed. So unless you're excited to remove that header, which is an easy task, uh, we recommend this for the Pi Zero, honestly, or you know some other Linux computer board that has the same pinout. You'll be able to use this colored header as well. And this was inspired by the Asus Tinker, which had the same kind of color. Uh, they somehow got that going. I think everyone was like, well, that's so cool. Let's have that for Raspberry Pi. And uh, we do. Now we do. Okay. Next up. This is a dome that covers the city. Yep. This, yeah. you've always wanted one and I got you one. Yeah. Now this is cool. It's like, what is this? This is, it's really hard to photograph. It's like, this is a, this is an excellent photograph. It's like, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, so this is a domed lens, and this is a really nice glass lens. So um, here's what you'd use it for. Here's what you use it for. You connect it up to our Raspberry Pi eyes or our uh, Teensy eyes uh, project, and it makes the eyes kind of like look global, globular, round, and they pop out. Um, and this is a really nice glass. I can't express through um, the com you know the computer yeah. how they feel, but they're incredibly smooth compared to plastic. And this is a demo. It, it looks really, really good in, in real life. It's hard to... No, it looks good even on the webcam. Like, tilt it a little bit so you can see, you know, like, yeah. Looks... Yeah, it's, 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 it, in, in, in person, it's got this, like, it looks like an eyeball is staring at you because it has that, um, you know, that round look to it. But um, these have a nice lip on them. See how there's, like, this little lip here? So that means that you can um, laser cut a piece and they hold in place. So they're not glued yeah. or anything. They're just held in place by the cutout, which is, a, like, a couple millimeters smaller than the outside so um, we looked at both glass and plastic but these glass ones are they're easy to clean and they don't scratch up like the acrylic ones and um, they look good they're actually originally designed for um, people making projectors or like LED something they're kind of there's something for some projector or LED yeah. uh, collimation but we think they're great for eyes you can use them for other stuff too if you ever need a, a convex lens um, but yeah they're really high quality and, and nice and you use one or two for your project you make creepy eyes. Okay. Speaking of creepy eyes. Tonight, the star of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, and the community is... Dun, dun, dun. More Halloween. creepy eyes. Halloween. Yes, it's that time. It's Halloween. I mean, we, we said a couple weeks ago, August 1st is the beginning of Halloween. Halloween. So we have a board uh, to celebrate because we're going all in on Halloween. Ween. Ugh, I can't even keep track of what I'm saying anymore because I'm so excited about how spooky this is. Um, so this is a development board that's kind of like a feather. It's feather compatible. Um, and we call it wing just because the pan was so good. You can plug feather wings into the back. It's got this, this header uh, spot on the back you can plug wings into. But it's, it's got a SAMD21 uh, G18, just like our feather M0. And it's got eight megabytes of flash. So you can store like long sound effects, which we thought was really cool. Um, people wanted to do props and they wanted to have um, long clips of sound. Um, so here it is. I'll show it off. So you get the two feather connectors um, on the back here. Um, you can plug in a LiPo battery to charge it, or you can also um, plug it directly with USB, which I'll do right now. It's got this light sensor. This is actually a reverse mount light sensor. So the light sensed is actually from the top, but it's picking place on the bottom. It's got a Class D speaker amplifier. So we're going to have a little speaker in the store soon you can plug in to have a portable um, like audio um, output. And you can also just solder to the pads back here if you want to connect your own. We have a port here for plugging in a NeoPixel strip. We have a port here for plugging in a sensor with a JST connector. We have an I2C port, which is, um, you can plug Grove connectors. So if you have any like seed uh, Grove devices that are I2C, you can plug them in and they'll fit here. Uh, we have an on off switch. So that's kind of nice. You can turn it on and off. Right now it's off. We have a NeoPixel. Um, which is used by CircuitPython or you to, de to you know, de debug what's going on. Um, we've got the eight megabytes of flash for storing files, CircuitPython, audio clips, images, animations, whatever you want. Um, let me see what else is on here. Get a little potentiometer for the audio. And on the back, 
we've got this awesome um, full color 120 by 120 TFT. And so you can use it for anything. It doesn't have to be this eyeball project demo, but you know, like we're really into the spooky eyes. So you can even, uh, you get one of each and now you can have the spooky eyes like kind of staring at you. Whoa, creepy. Um, and then of course you can use the light sensor right here to, um, the code will um, automatically dilate the eyes when you cover up the light sensors. So that's kind of cool. You can kind of see it a little bit. Yeah. And you can tune the, the code. And then it's got some capacitive touch pads here, which you can use also as analog inputs. So it's kind of like we thought, like, you know, what are people building Halloween props? Like, what, are you, what kind of projects are people building for Halloween? And then we designed a board that was optimized for that. There's a TFT for debugging output or if you want to display anything. It has audio output. You can connect servos to it. You can connect NeoPixels to it. Uh, you can play um, short video or animation clips like this, this eyeball animation. And uh, we're going to be doing some fun Halloween projects because we've always, we love Halloween. We want to do more Halloween projects, but uh, we never had a board designed for it. So now we do. The Halloween okay. coming at you. What's that? One eyeball. Four teeth. <laughs> <laughs>